So let's just go ahead and reach. Now, now since there's only two of you today, are there any particular things that, that puzzle you that you want to get into and, you know, in terms of stretching or in terms of material, speak up because you're basically getting a class that it can be very focused on what you want today. So I'll just go along, but, you know, feel free to speak up if you have something that you just haven't understood why we do that and you want to ask about it. Or what you know, or how we do it, or what you're trying to, what you're aiming for. So let's go ahead, and we'll just reach to the side. And I'm keeping both sit bones on the floor. I'm trying not to lift my my butt on the opposite side. I'm going to try and keep both. Both cheeks on the floor firmly. And then we'll go ahead and go to second position with the legs and stretch. And I think I'm going to do a little extra stuff for the back today. If you have a cushion or if you have a, a carpeted floor, that should do. You just want something soft for your knees. And we're going to do this exercise, which is great if you have back pain back here. It's really good for that. You're going to be on all fours. We call it the cat camel exercise. Back a little bit. And basically, you're going to arch up like a cat. And then you're going to Go back and arch in this position. And this is just a good way to work out those back muscles to get them moving. Sometimes those muscles can get very stiff. And we'll do that about seven times all together. You can go. Sometimes you can go really slow or really fast, see what speed feels good to you. And then I'm going to face front. And what we're going to do next, well, actually, maybe I should do some of the diagonals so you can see me better. So we're going to reach, we're going to get as close in as we can and crawl the fingers forward so that you can feel a stretch along the back. And if you have to open the knees a little wider, that's okay. And then crawl to one side. If you have a stiff back on one side, it might feel good on one side more than the other. Stretch that one that feels stiffer and tighter. Go a little longer there. And then the last thing we're going to do is something in yoga called thread the needle. I don't know if you've ever done this before, but Basically, what you're going to do is stay in that correct position, reach one hand in, and you're going to bring this hand in. Try and lay, it's hard for me to get down this low, but try and lay down on the, get your head as low to the floor as you can. And this is a good shoulder stretch. And we'll go ahead and switch sides. And then come on up. So that it helps, I don't know, it helps my knees to have a cushion underneath, but if you don't need the cushion, that's okay. I like to have a pillow when I do that one. And then let's see, we're gonna do our we're gonna do our quad stretch. And 
and exhale and breathe out. And switch legs whenever you're ready. And if you need a little more stretch, but you're pretty flexible, if you squeeze the glutes here, you'll get a better quad stretch. And then go ahead and lunge. And a lunge is when you bend the front leg and leave the back leg straight. And we do that a lot in modern class. And switch legs whenever it feels right to do it. I'm slightly turning out, but if you do it in parallel, you'll get more of the back of the calf muscle directly behind. So take care of both and see which one, whichever one feels tighter, stay with that one so you really stretch it out. And then this one, the one where I step on the, the bridge of the foot, I bring my legs back. Step on the bridge of the foot and bring the heel to the floor. This is a pretty intense stretch for the peroneals, which I really need because I find it very tight. Then this is another good one that I found for my side body. I bring the leg behind and then I just reach. It's also good for the psoas and I reach toward the wall. So I've got one leg crossed behind, the outside leg crossed behind. I don't think we've done this one before. And then go ahead and switch. So I take this outside leg and cross it behind. Oh, and let's do this. let's do the psoas while we're here in our lunge. And then this out, I have the lunging on the inside leg, back leg straight. The same arm as the straight leg is the one that reaches over. And then switch. Ooh, that's tight. Reaching away from that straight leg. And I'm going to do the peroneals one more time. Maybe from a different angle, it'll be a little easier to see what I'm doing. So I'll just go ahead and give that a try. And this is where I'm pressing the heel down. I hope you can hear me. I'm talking behind my belt here. And I'm exhaling as I do it. That allows the muscles to relax and stretch a little bit better. And then I'm just going to do this stretch for the arms. Now my neck is getting stiff, so I'm just going to do some head rolls. Whew. 
Oh my God, my neck is making such a crunching noise right now. <laughs> Whew. Where'd that come from? You just go ahead and work out your neck however feels good. Let's go ahead and do some arm and shoulder stretches. This kind of follows up on the thread the needle stretch that we did earlier. Similar, not as intense though. And the reason it's so important to do all these stretches before dancing is in most cases, if we haven't been moving, our muscles are a little contracted. Um, just especially like the psoas muscle if we've been sitting a lot and it's good to get them stretched out before we do big movements so that we don't strain anything or tear any muscles because then you'll be just a lot more sore in the morning. And let's just pull the arms back a little bit. And then behind. Cross one more time. Oh, and let's do a nice diagonal. Let's give it a diagonal. And then spread that out. Let's roll the shoulders. My neck is super crackly today. <laughs> now let's go ahead and see if we can isolate the shoulders. Put your hands like in the hip area and just see if you can do a little bit of shoulder isolation. It's kind of hard to separate that from the ribs. The ribs here, let's see if we can move the ribs like we did in the phrase last week. Remember how we did those movements at the beginning of the phrase. And let's just go ahead and do, put the soles of the feet together and let's do a little stretch. And let's get up on our feet, reach over and stretch. My, right now I'm in second position, parallel with my feet. I'm going to turn them in a little because I like to get the peroneals, but you can stay in parallel if it's the back of the calves that are more tight for you. I'll let you decide. See if you can lean more into your, uh, keep the heels on the floor, but put a little more weight toward the front, toward the toes. See if you can get a little more stretch that way. Uh, nothing like a good long stretch. All right, we'll do a few plies. Let's do once in each position. This is where you may want to turn on some music so you feel like you're dancing. It's always good to try and dance through your exercises. That always feels better than just feeling like you're doing it to silence. I won't turn on the music because it sounds awful on Zoom. Zoom is designed for speaking, not so much for music playing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and First position. Let's start with turnout. And we'll just do some plies and open and up and arch and rise. We'll go ahead and step to second position. And plie. And 
and rise and arch. One more time in a second. We'll do what we call a grand plie. We haven't done this before. And we're going to go ahead and bring the arms up to the side. Bring the arms down as if you're going to scoop something. Try and maintain the rotation equally. So what I'm trying to do here is not let the knees go in as I bend, but try and maintain the rotation from my hip area as I go into second position. So I'm going to try and make the knees go right over the toes. And you might have to bring the, the toes in just a little bit. And just practice that. This, this is second position. And just check out your knees and make sure your knees are not forward of the feet, that you want them to be right over. Let's try first position. And bend and straighten. So the knees are going to track right over the toes, ideally right over the middle toe. And to do that, you're going to maintain the rotation in this leg. I think we've done these turnout exercises. Let's go ahead and work on rotators. So we're going to brush, turn the whole leg in and the whole leg out. And now we're going to do a demi plie, keeping that rotation in the hips. And then the other leg, turn it in, turn it out. So really from the whole leg, the turnout comes from up here in the hips. And then bend and side, turn it in, turn it out, and turn it out as you bend. And side, turn it in, turn it out, and track the knees right over those toes. And to the back, when we go to the back, it doesn't feel like it's turning in or turning out so much. And here we go. And back, turn it in, turn it out. And plie. So that was a good little bit of plie for us. To get so I up. think for the folks who are watching the um, the class, show me that turnout exercise we just did, which is turn in, turn out, plie, and we're doing front, front, side, side, back, back. And I'll put a timestamp in the description so that you know going back to the whole exercise. So that's what you'll send me this week. And then we're going to start on the phrase today that's going to be your final exam. And you're going to send me a video of okay, that. So we're going to step back. And I'm just going to do the whole thing once so you can just watch. And then we're going to do a figure eight and plie, walk in a circle. From here, we're going to steal Mark Morris's move from jealousy. Do you remember this one where he goes under the arm? We're going to steal that. And then we're going to plie, lunge to the right, lunge to the left, and up, upper back arch. And from here, we're going to do triplet, down, up, up. So that's going to be our final exam. That's the preview today. So you're going to memorize that, and you're going to do it um, without watching the video of me doing it. So you really do have to memorize it. I'm trying to get this tilted so you can see my feet. So let's go over it from the beginning. Here we go. We're in parallel position with our feet, going straight forward. We're going to take a plie, and the arm is going to go forward and back. I'm going to do that from the side so you can see it. So from here, you're going to go forward and back. I'm going to take a step, and I'm going to propel myself from my left leg onto my right like that. So but we're going to do it facing forward. This is perfect for a space where you just have like three feet and not a lot of width. So this is good for that kind of space. So here we go. We reach back. I'm in plie, step. And then we do the same thing, but to the side. Then we're going to join hands here. So let's go that far. I'm going to switch this to gallery view so I can see you guys and see how you're doing. All right. Hopefully that didn't switch. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Perfectly good. Let's do it all together. Yeah, good. So the idea is that you propel yourself from the standing leg and you step. Oh, sorry. 
you propel yourself and you step back to it. Like that. So you bend both legs, step back together. And then from the side, same thing. Bend this leg, step together. And I'm doing all of this with one arm. So the arm that's opposite the one that's, that's bending, not the one that's stepping. The same arm that's stepping out is the arm I'm using, if that makes any sense. Maybe that's a better way to say it. So the leg I'm stepping back, that's also the arm I'm using. So here we go, arm and leg, both reach. Get to here with me, and then just step to it and reach back. And that, the momentum of that arm, actually helps you, helps you move back. So if you have more space, you can cover a little more space. Yeah, Jay, you have a nice big space, so go ahead and really take big steps. The way you take big steps, you plie as deeply as you can. If I'm in plie, I can reach way back to see if you can, yeah, nice big step. That was excellent, good, yep. That's it, so we're gonna step back and side. Here we go, all together, ready? And reach back and step. And reach side and step. So remember, it's the, the same leg that reaches, but I'm going to reach to the opposite so that I can go around and help my momentum exactly. That's it, good. From there, the other arm follows, and I'm going to plie. So I'm here, and I've got my hands together. Now I'm gonna do a figure eight motion. And you can do a little bit with the hips, but try not to get too carried away. It's really a little more contained. But we're gonna go here. That's it, good. Try it once with me slow. So we're here, I almost feel like I'm carrying a basket or something. I go to the opposite side. I flip the arms. Just watch me, Berkeley, watch me. Do it with me at the same time. So here we go. You're here. You're here. Now you're here. And then up and over. And then last, you go back one more time. Yeah, exactly. Let's do it once slowly, then I'll get it. So you join hands. You're here. You flip up and over and back and from here all we're going to do is just walk in a circle like you've got the room and the way you cover space remember you're in plie you stay low try covering more space by keeping your knees okay. bent here we go from the beginning yes good step back and step side Joint hands, figure eight, and plie. From here, we're just going to walk in that circle exactly, and we're going to add some arms now. The arms, let me get under. So we're here. As we walk in a circle, we're going to bring the arms up and down. Really simple. So walking in a circle. Circle with that look is up and down. So it's half and half. It takes about eight counts to walk in a circle, so it's about four and four. Let's count it out. We're here and we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So after four counts, that's when the arms start to come down. Let's do that one more time. And plie. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By then we should be front again. And here's where we steal Mark Morris's move. This leg goes back as this arm comes forward. I'm gonna do it from the side view, but it really is facing front. So we're here and we're gonna try to do almost like doing the limbo under your arm. You stay bent on both legs. Get back a little bit. You stay in plie, you stay low, you stay low, 
you stay low and you come up at the very end so you don't fall over. This is a tricky one. Exactly, that's it. Now just do a full turn vertically. Just add a full turn to it. Now you're gonna be turning towards your arm, just like when we did thread the needle, it feels very similar. So you're here and you're gonna go under that arm and around. Do you remember the video, the jealousy video? He did a couple of these and it looked like he was being pulled toward the corner. That's the move we're doing. You can go back and look at that video and see how he did it. It's hard. The key thing is don't feel it in your, don't bend your back, bend your knees. That's gonna make it much more comfortable. That's the secret. Bend those knees. That's it. See if you can actually keep the arm low and go under it without getting there up high. That one goes back, but that one immediately comes forward. So you step back and then you start to go forward. So let's see, we've got, let's go from the beginning. Stepping back, stepping side, join hands, figure eight, and plie, walk in a circle as the arms come up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Leg shoots back. Now go under it, stepping forward with that same leg. Yep, good. From here, it's from here it's super easy because it's stuff you've done before. Once you finish that, come back to parallel. I'm gonna step back a little bit. You can see my feet. So from here, you've just done that thing around going under the arm. You come back to neutralize plie, and then I'm gonna step lunge out. And I'm going to put the weight on that leg that I stepped out on, and I'm going to lift the other leg. So I'm just going to basically lunge from side to side. So just try that. Going, you're going each way. I swing my arms a little as I do it. So the idea is to put the weight out and out and out and out. So you're going to step on it, put the weight on it. So I'm turning on the leg. I feel like a washing machine, especially if I swing my arms. <laughs> you know how it goes back and forth? Cool. Let's add that on to the whole phrase. Here we go. Stepping back and stepping side, figure eight. Up and over. Plie, walk in a circle. Arms go up, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Arm and leg go out. Now go under it. Plie and parallel first. Lunge and lunge. And now from here, you just bring that leg I'm turning behind. half turn. I'm turning from the window to the front, which is less than a full turn, like a half turn. Lunge and I end with my arms up. And now I simply do that upper back arch we do at the beginning with our pliés. And then I come forward to fit. And then next week we're just going to add the triplet down up up, down plie. up up. Now I'm going to take my weight and step out. I'm going to see the back of the room. That's it. Step right out onto it. Uh, you don't have to cross, Jay. Literally, that leg steps to the side, like that. Yes, there you go, good. And now step to the other side. Yes, good. Then bring that leg, all you do is bring that leg behind and then you go into that arch. And then we'll do a triplet. The leg that, the first leg that you lunged on, when you come back, that leg goes behind. So I'm in this position so that when I arch, I have something to lean on because it's hard to just arch in two feet because you kind of fall backwards. Yeah, there you go. Yep, and arch back. The best and way, I'm going to face this way. So we're going here, but we're really facing front, so my front would be there. When you're here, you're going to go under it. 
So I'm going to turn. Let's see, I'm turning toward the arm and going under it. Let's go ahead and do a few stretches. So you guys got a head start on the final exam. Yay. And I have to say, I think I like the floor sloping down in front of me more than sideways. So I think I'm going to keep this arrangement. <laughs> it feels much better on my hips. Much, much better. So thank you both for joining me today. Let's do a second position stretch. We'll just reach over. Go ahead and point the toes. That'll give you a little more flexibility. And whenever you're stretching, you always want to feel, Jay, watch my arm. You always want to feel a nice length and reach out and over rather than crunching down. So you, yeah, oh, that's a beautiful, that looks really good, Jay. Yep, that's it. So do you feel you get a bit, bit more of a stretch, a little more lengthening? Yeah, always do that every time you stretch, try to feel it that way. <laughs> 